we are what I call a human capital spin-off of uh, an existing European bus manufacturer, mainly in the field of airport buses. Are you a design engineer? Or do you work in process engineering? Is your goal to improve process efficiency or enhance quality of your vehicles? Hi, I'm Marco, and you are watching the first episode of our new video show, Better Made with Adhesives. In this show, we want to spotlight latest achievements in adhesive bonding, and we want to highlight how adhesive bonding can help you in conquering your daily challenges. Martin, what can our viewers expect? Well, Marco, you indicated already a little bit what it contains. I think our viewers can really expect how adhesives can help them in the design phase. So how do I design better my vehicle? How can I improve my assemblies? Or also, how can I speed up my process? But we go beyond that. We also want to showcase best demonstrated practice cases. We want to give insights to customers. And especially today, in our new episode, it's going to be very interesting. We talk about modularity. We talk about electrification, the name of the game today. And we talk also about new materials, composite materials. That sounds great. And as Martin said, we prepared the first episode where David visited Iversum in Slovenia. Enjoy watching. I'd like to welcome you to this uh, edition of Better Made with Adhesives. Um, I'm today here in Maribor in Slovenia, where we are meeting uh, Iversum, which is a startup company active in the field of electrical vehicles for public transport. I'd like to introduce you to Pete Speck, who is giving us a tour today through the facilities. Hi David, welcome to Maribor, welcome to Iversum. Uh, happy to show you uh, around our premises today. It's very interesting to see how it evolved um, since I have been here the last time. So could you give our viewers an um, introduction about who Iversum is, where you're coming from? Basically, we are what I call a human capital spin-off of uh, an existing European bus manufacturer, mainly in the field of airport buses. Multicultural team and we will show you what this is all about a bit more. It's interesting to meet the Swiss guy in, in Maribor. Quite right? though. <laughs> <laughs> um, what brought you and the team to uh, get into e-mobility? Basically, we already started uh, at the last company we were together. Uh, that was uh, a, a project. Uh, the ownership we had there were not fully behind e-mobility, so the management team decided uh, let's only concentrate on that. We saw the future in e-mobility and in e-mobility solely. So split basically uh, ways and said let's concentrate on electromobility, become an electric vehicle OEM uh, solely and purely, uh, mainly concentrating on passenger transport. Yeah, and you started really from the green field, so I'm very excited to see some of the vehicles and uh, get some more details. Let's do that. So Pete, we have now a look at the first of your vehicle, which is uh, commercially available already. Um, the E-Train, what uh, makes the E-Train special? This is indeed the first vehicle category we went into series production with. Uh, it's mainly for touristic applications, um, beach resorts, lake resorts, uh, typical sightseeing activities. So that's where you have these uh, local trains now. Oh, correct. So today yeah. you have those western looking really locomotive uh, trains out there. Uh, you see them a lot. There is around 8,000 of them uh, just in Europe. Uh, and predominantly there are still diesel or gas engines underneath. So there is a huge need to replace all these combustion engine driven touristic trains out there with a more sustainable electric version. Pete, you mentioned um, you built the entire vehicle on a 
modular concept. So what modularity are you offering? That's correct. The locomotive dimension is basically always the same. What we do have is the possibility uh, to deploy a different number of battery packs. So two, three or four packs, depending on the customer need, if it comes to the range of the vehicle overall. Uh, on the other hand, we have a huge modularity if it comes to the wagon following these locomotives. We can have two different widths, uh, 180, 230 and three different lengths, uh, which allows us to pretty much accommodate to every customer or homologation need which is out there in the market. Hello guys. Hello. So Pete, that was an interesting tour around your facility and the E-Train. Um, now we are here in the E-Shuttle. Um, what can you tell us about the E-Shuttle and uh, your other vehicles in planning? Welcome on board, first of all, of our E-Shuttle. Um, it's our newest addition to the vehicle lineup. Um, special, different. Uh, we want to give a different impression. It basically hits a nerve in the market. Uh, it's that vehicle category that didn't exist in diesel times anymore. Uh, 8.5 me meters down to 5.4 meters. So in between the Mercedes Sprinter and the full blast 12 meter city bus, that category didn't really exist uh, in times of diesel buses because the price was more or less the same. Um, then no customer selected uh, to choose a smaller vehicle. They were all getting a full blast 12 meter bus with an 11, 13 liter diesel engine and driving around half empty. Now these days with electric drivetrains, you can position yourself in between and we're getting very, very good response from the market in that regard. Now we have Eno with us. Eno, um, what is special when engineering a modular vehicle? Uh, it is an interesting and doable concept uh, in case you start from the early beginning uh, as modular. And uh, it does have some challenges, but they, are, uh, they can be overcome by uh, thinking in advance in, in this direction. So modular build with different materials, what, what do you combine, what materials and how do you assemble? We are using a steel frame uh, with epoxy coating uh, to which we attach uh, GRP panels, uh, glass, uh, different uh, types of plastic and other lining, uh, wooden floor and so on. Um, so all these materials are a challenge for the uh, bonding agents used in the, uh, in the mix. Uh, we had uh, great cooperation and help from Robert Zimczyk here uh, with Sika and I think we are doing well with overcoming the challenges. Now we have uh, Robert with us from uh, Sika Slovenia. Robert, how did you support Iversum in that project? As always, we in Sika industry team starts in developing department. We start with basic project screening and we need to answer on questions like which materials we will bond, what are the expected loads, what are the dimensions of bonded parts and which adhesives and sealants should we use. I help to reverse them with adhesive joint calculations and to suggest them the right adhesives and sealants. So how did you do all the testing for this project? I am glad to have support of my SICA colleagues from other countries. Company Eversum sourced their materials for their e-shuttle and e-train from different sources from all the world. My colleagues from many countries helped me with adhesion testings. Because of their help, we can respond fast and we can provide the safe solution for Eversum. Um, now, Pete, we heard a lot about uh, the way it's produced. Now, looking into that facility you have, and the plans, there might be other things to consider when scaling the vehicle production. There is indeed potential uh, to scaling it through giving away licenses. Uh, what uh, Robert uh, rightfully mentioned, uh, we do have suppliers uh, pretty much on a worldwide scale. And the same thing goes potential interest to get a license from us and produce those vehicles at different locations uh, in the world, uh, might be SKD, might be CKD, 
and uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident that Sika could support us once we will start uh, our production through license agreements with partners somewhere in the world, as you were already mentioning, that network. Yeah, I think that's uh, really one of the powerful um, aspects of working with Sika. We are present in more than 100 countries um, with people like Robot, uh, with uh, technical support we can do. So looking at the vehicle, there is a lot of cameras and displays around. Is, is there more in this vehicle? Good point. Uh, basically, if uh, you look at it, we call our vehicles e-born. Uh, so latest and greatest if it comes to technologies. There is one technology which we did not follow. This was the autonomous driving uh, AD. Uh, artificial intelligent area uh, which you have out there in modern transport concepts. For us as a company we're simply too small we could not do that but we had a lot of potential uh, customers, partners that talked to us in that regard so we have decided uh, as we speak here and we are about uh, from an engineering point of view to make our vehicle AD ready uh, so autonomous driving ready uh, by design, we would homologate then the vehicle and will up to an L0, so still with a safety driver or a driver uh, full, uh, fully equipped, but we would give the possibility to potential partners, operators which are out there to bring it to L2, L4, so we can say we're the only uh, supplier of those kind of buses that are fully AD ready uh, and so ready for the future. So nowadays on the street, I'm not seeing any autonomous vehicles. So where are those uh, e-shuttles or autonomous vehicles being used in future? Yeah, I mean, there is, there is different, different business models out there. As I said, we want to provide the vehicle ready with a driver, but through project work, through different business models, uh, it can then be selected to bring it to the different levels of autonomous driving, which uh, will follow a development over time. It might take a, a bit less time, it might take uh, a bit longer. Um, so different business models out there. Uh, all I can say is we're, we're fully ready um, and uh, provide something to potential customers no one else can. I have to say now sitting in that vehicle, it's really nice to be here. Nice ambience, um, lighting, the seats. So great work. What was one of our objectives uh, basically to also attract a, a younger generation, uh, but also any kind of passenger that they would like to step uh, onto that vehicle and get a good feeling. Uh, life on board, e-born vehicles, modern, good feel. You tell me how you feel, uh, but most people smile also when we are at exhibitions or deliver car vehicles to our customers. You usually see a big smile, which is a good sign. So Pete, this eShot looks so neat. Where are the batteries placed in that one? The beauty of it, David, is that all our competitors put the battery on the roof. If you have a battery on the roof, there is no way that you can go for a lightweight construction. So what we had, if you look at it, we basically created and designed the entire vehicle around the batteries. The batteries are hidden in the floor. Uh, we had a battery developed that is only 13.5 centimeters high. So what you see in, in that length of the modularity. In the longest configuration as we have here, you have nine battery packs in the floor. So three battery strings, uh, three batteries for each segment, which you see here. And if you look at that very narrow floor area, um, this is only possible if you have such a narrow uh, built battery that you can put in there. So you said you developed your own battery pack. I see over there some of these packs. Maybe we have a quick look on those. Yeah, that is correct, because additionally to what you see in the floor, uh, for a longer range, if the customer requires that, we can deploy the same basic battery packs uh, at the rear of the vehicle which we can see later in a special compartment. I will quickly show you that as well, but it gives you a good impression 
uh, on how thick such a battery pack is. 13.5 centimeters high. One, two, three packs. This is the same as you would see next to each other in the floor or alternatively here at the rear of the vehicle. So very interesting to see what you can do with a greenfield approach, starting from scratch, building something entirely new. Um, to our viewers, I hope you enjoyed um, that session where we have been here outside at the customer in uh, Maribor. And um, I like to hand back to the studio um, in Switzerland. Welcome back. I think that was a pretty interesting episode. And by the way, the support provided by Robert Simsek, you can expect as well in your country. Now, Marco, what can our viewers expect for the next episodes? If you want to see other interesting cases like the one of Iversum in Slovenia, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel or to our newsletter. See you next time when it's about better made with adhesives. <laughs>